I'm about to get on board the longest flight in the world, 19 hours, and I'm gonna make it even worse. I'm sitting in the worst seat on the plane, and I'm doing the whole thing with no devices and no entertainment. Let's see how this goes in this episode of Window Seat. Just how long is this flight? Well, let's put it like this. I get on the plane on a Monday and I don't reach my destination until Wednesday. An entire day and then some disappears into the thin air of an ultra long range aircraft that has pushed the bounds of commercial aviation and changed the entire way we get around the world. I am headed from New York's JFK Airport to Singapore's uber modern Changi Airport on Singapore Airlines Flight 23. Picture the longest flight you've ever taken and then add a few more excruciatingly long hours to that. The flight actually covers almost 10,000 miles in the air. Total flight time just shy of 19 hours, making it the longest commercial airline flight in the entire world. And it has been since the year 2021. And get this, the airline also has a nonstop from Newark to Singapore, but it is two miles shorter than this one, thus it does not get the title. I've had a lot of really dumb ideas. This might be the dumbest one yet. After walking all the way to JFK Airport from LaGuardia, 10 miles through Queens for some strange reason that you can see in another episode of Window Seat if you click in the upper right hand corner right there. Oh, and by the way, it's not exactly easy to do with 20 pounds strapped on your back. I am good and tired and ready to embark on the world's longest flight. From inside the Centurion Lounge at JFK, I spot the bird that will take us halfway around the world. That Airbus A350-900 ULR off in the distance, right back there. The fact is, flights like this were not even possible in the past. It's because of new airplanes like the Airbus 350, the Boeing 787 that are long range, low capacity, fuel efficient. The airlines say they can make much more money on these planes with just 250 people on board than they ever could with 400 people on board those less efficient 747s. The technology is amazing. And I'm not the only one who thinks so. As we start to queue up for the flight, it's clear this plane is full. And I'm reminded of the challenge I've presented myself. Not only did I want to endure the longest flight on the planet, I wanted to do it in the least comfortable way possible. So I chose seat 43F, very back row of the plane, middle section, middle seat, right next to the smelly bathrooms. Oh yeah, and one more thing, I have to be in the moment, experience every second of this miraculous feat of aviation. So that means no watching flicks on the seat back monitor. Okay, so the rule is like this. I can have the uh, flight map up on the monitor in front of me, but that's it. No music, no movies, no TV shows, no other entertainment, just the flight map, that's it. I will have my noise canceling headphones, but I won't listen to anything. I will just try and quiet the sounds of that big old airplane. Those are the rules. Finally, as we approach the 10 o'clock p.m. hour, it is time to board the Airbus. And I don't know about the other passengers, but I was feeling downright giddy. I've gotta be honest with you, I fly quite a bit. I don't think I've ever been more excited about getting on an airplane than I am on this one right now. It is giddiness that turned to despair when I caught a glimpse of the business class seats on this plane, which took up seemingly most of the aircraft. Big, plush, beautiful, and at an average of seven to $10,000 per seat, way out of my price range. So to the back of the plane I schlepped. And there I spotted what has to be the nicest back row of an airplane seat on planet Earth. I'd attempted to travel low class, but this is clearly anything but. As the fancier passengers in front of me stuff the overheads, I give the amenities a once over, the usual stuff, blanket and pillow, and what's this? A very fancy pair of headphones, not the usual disposable ones that you're handed on board most flights. But the airline makes it clear these are not for keeps. Otherwise, it can be uh, bumpy at times so while you're seated. Uh, do me a favor and have your seatbelt securely fastened at all times. Within moments, we get the welcome message from the captain and the safety videos underway. Before we take off, stow your luggage under the seat in front of you. And before you know it, we are embarking on the longest flight in the entire world. And that seat back map in front of me, my only source of joy for the next day or so, gives me the full picture of just how far we're traveling. Now, the path varies based on the jet stream. Sometimes it cuts over northern Europe and then down over Africa. But we're headed to the top of the world, over Canada, 
then over Greenland, up through the Arctic, then back down through Russia, China, and then finally over Southeast Asia and Malaysia before dropping into our final destination of Singapore. Before I have time to process the lengths to which we're circumnavigating the globe, dinner is served. I was expecting something exotic and flavorful and Asian, but it was beef and pasta and some broccoli. Not the worst airplane food in the world, but I don't think the Michelin folks will be giving the airline an award anytime soon. Now, here's the cool thing. After dinner and drink service, they show off subtly some of the airplane's technology. The planes have 16 million programmable LED light possibilities. Among them, a way to mimic a sunset to try and convince your body it's time to go to sleep. They also pump in more fresh air than most flights, about 15% more to make you feel more refreshed on board and less jet lagged when you land. I usually don't come to you from an airplane bathroom, but it's the only place that I can talk without disrupting the other travelers. Right now it's just after midnight, we're about an hour and a half into this flight. Just another, I don't know, 17 hours to go. Uh, we'll see how it goes so far. You know, I mentioned that I'm in the worst seat on the plane, but the reality is it's not that bad. It actually reclines. There's no uh, issues being close to the bathrooms at all. It's been pleasant so far, some turbulence, but not that bad. And it's curious how some people really get ready for the overnight part of this flight. Oh, did you hear that? Somebody just tried to jostle open the door. So I wrap things up. I head back to my seat where thankfully that 10 mile walk and a few cocktails made me nice and sleepy. So I'm about to nod off for about half this flight. Good night. <sighs> After more turbulence rocked me awake again, it was time to kill some time because, frankly, that's all I got. I brought Arnold Schwarzenegger's new book because that's not technology, but to be honest, I only got through a few pages. It's a fine book, just wasn't feeling it at the moment. I'll pick it up again later. My eye continues to scan the monitor in front of me, but it's more of the same. Still flying over the middle of the ocean, middle of nowhere, still hours left on this flight. So here's my confession. catch my eyes wandering to the television screens in the rows in front of me, and I stare longer than I should. This no TV thing for 19 hours is next to impossible. All right, back in the bathroom, hopefully uninterrupted this time. Just a quick update on what uh, is happening at this point. We're a little more than halfway through the flight. We've been at this for eight plus hours with about nine left to go, I think. Uh, so far, so good. It is a little dispiriting to uh, see that you still have eight or nine hours left uh, on a flight. That's a long time. But that's sort of the purpose was to see what it's like to experience the longest flight in the world. It certainly feels long, but it's comfortable. Uh, it's nice. There's been some turbulence, but uh, nothing that we can't manage. And uh, I'm anxious to see how the rest of this goes. While I'm in the bathroom, it's worth noting, while Singapore Airlines is tremendous and widely regarded as among the best in the industry, not everything on board was absolutely perfect. And again, the food could have been better, though there was plenty of it. With a few hours left in the flight, they brought by more to eat, a small boxed pizza that was pretty lackluster, and then an hour or so before landing, another full meal, a breakfast of ham, eggs, yogurt, and the like. Not bad, but I'm guessing if you opted for one of the fancy seats at the front of the plane, you were probably eating a whole lot better than this. Fast forward a few more hours and judging from the flight map, my only source of entertainment on this plane, it was clear we were finally getting very close to Singapore. Through another round of turbulence, the monitors lit up the cabin telling us to be seated. The longest flight in the world was coming to an end. Not only did the cockpit crew get us here safely, we even landed a few minutes early. A win-win. Moments later, the lights came on, the passengers darted out of their seats, jockeying for pole position in the aisle, and our flight was complete. As Wednesday morning dawns here in Singapore, I take one last look at the surprisingly comfortable back of the plane, middle of the row seat that I've called home since Monday night and feel a sense of pride that I've tackled commercial aviation's most impressive feat. Goodbye, thank you. Yeah, thank you, bye-bye. Bye -bye. Going longer and farther than any other regularly scheduled flight on earth. But my chest quickly unpuffs as I pass back by those business class seats, reminded of how great it must be to travel like this. Bye-bye. Okay.
Then it's off to the inside of Singapore's Changi Airport, which is truly one of the most phenomenal places on Earth. Named best airport on the planet a staggering 12 times, including this year. You can eat, sleep, go to the movies, shop, and take in the world's largest indoor waterfall all right inside this airport. Don't worry, we'll spend an entire day inside Changi in an upcoming episode and show you everything it has to offer. But until then, let us bask in the glow of what we've just done. So I did it, longest flight in the world, worst seat on the plane, no technology, and it was a piece of cake. Great experience, really wonderful, glad I did it. Couldn't help but think about the pioneers of aviation who would be slack-jawed if they realized how far that industry's come, that we could actually get on a plane and fly for 19 hours. They risk life and limb and reputation to make this happen, only to have some slack-jawed yokel like me come along, buy a couple of plane tickets, and be able to fly halfway around the world. It's pretty amazing. Uh, that's it for this episode of Window Seat. I'm Jeremy Hubbard. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions about our flight or any suggestions for future episodes. And if you don't mind, hit like and share to help spread the word as we travel to every country on the planet. We'd love it if you hit subscribe too so you can follow our travels. Really appreciate the support. We're back with a brand new episode of Window Seat next Friday. In the meantime, be sure to check out one of these other episodes from Window Seat. <laughs>